was a major crime scene. Several people had told me often the shooter is watching in the crowd. And so when we walked out, I was very nervous at just being watched. My name is Leanne Milton, and I'm a documentary photographer. In 2011, I went to Guatemala to photograph firefighters who were first responders to crime scenes, and I got a first look at how Guatemalans were living with daily violence. It was a period of um, high crime, high homicide rates, high femicide rates. Uh, Guatemalans were tired of the violence. In this photo, he was a 31-year-old man who was found shot in his car. We got there right before the family did, and moments after arriving, they just began to collapse in front of the car. People from the neighborhood were coming out to see what was going on, and there were uh, several funeral directors waiting for their moment to approach the family to arrange funeral. I was really surprised at how often people on the street are visibly seeing these crime scenes. Police say that oftentimes people are shot for reasons such as extortion or to eliminate competition. And he was a mechanic, so they suspect that there is a dispute between two mechanics. So in this photo, there's a firefighter that's taking information from the family members that live in this house. There were large bullet casings on the floor. There were several individuals who were shot dead. Their faces were covered and there was blood on the ground. It was a major crime scene that involved the narcos. Before we arrived, the firefighter threw me a sweatshirt that said Bombero on the back and said, just do what I do, but don't say a word. It was quite tense. The woman in the middle was crying. I decided to photograph them to obscure their faces, to give them privacy, and I just remember myself feeling quite scared. Several people had told me, oftentimes the shooter is watching in the crowd, and so when we walked out, I was very nervous at just being watched. Didn't want to be a target. Yeah, it was very intense, that moment. This was the same evening as the big narco crime scene. We went straight to the hospital because this man came in, he arrived with multiple gunshots and no identification, so they don't know who he is. They gave them the name Dos Equis, or two X's, which is used if they don't know the name of the individual. For me, it just depicted this like kind of biblical scene of like Jesus coming down from the cross. And we see all these hands like carrying him, lifting him. And we see the paramedic here covering one of the gunshot holes. And essentially he bled out and did not recover from the shooting. Just spending time at the hospital gave me a sense of sort of the types of violence that were occurring and how just everyday people were affected. After the fall of the Khmer Rouge and more than a decade of civil war, Cambodia reopened their borders. That then introduced the flow of drugs coming in and through the country. And so for Cambodians, the drug issue is kind of a new problem. So in this photo, we see a woman injecting um, heroin in the neck of this other woman, and they inject in their necks because the veins in their arms aren't available because of overuse. So it was a combination of uh, heroin and methamphetamines and the lack of drug awareness that really drove the drug issue in Cambodia. The government didn't really know how to combat drug use, let alone provide preventative care and rehabilitation. And so they would go and arrest homeless people and drug users and take them to these uh, detention centers. Both Human Rights Watch and Open Society were producing reports about abuse in these detention centers. And so this is inside one of the rooms, and I saw this arm kind of reaching in. It was just, kind of just gave me this like ominous feel of like, what's happening in this location? I followed a group of men out to the field, and then they kind of lined up to do these kind of warm-up type exercises. They looked a bit confused as to like why they were doing it. And then I had saw that these men were perfectly lined and spaced out. So that sort of juxtaposed kind of this 
awkward exercises that they were doing. It was a reminder of kind of who's in charge, right? I found it very odd. This is like a method of treating drug addiction through these kind of daily exercises. The government removes, right, the issue off the street, visibly off the street, but it doesn't actually do anything. Late in 2015, I came across this news about babies being born with microcephaly in Brazil. Microcephaly is a rare condition in which, you know, babies are born with uh, incomplete brain development. I headed to Recife uh, in the state of Pernambuco in the northeast of Brazil and went straight to the maternity hospital. And this is the moment kind of when we first met baby Duda and her family. So this is Cleani Silva and she is holding Duda. I noticed like the you know, like just like the delicate like dress. She became sort of like this doll-like figure. Despite her disabilities and despite how she looked, like she was just received and cared for with so much love. In this photo, there's uh, Baby Duda's doing some physical therapy. It's a way to kind of relax her muscles and then train her how to like sit on her own. Because microcephaly, it, it causes muscles to stiffen. You know, they go to the hospital for these uh, therapy treatments, which at the time was free for all uh, families who ha have children with microcephaly. And this moment really just depicts this oneness between mother and child. You know, it's, it's a moment for me that, as a mother myself, that I can relate to. Families who have babies born with microcephaly are struggling now more than ever because there is no more assistance left. And it's sort of, they've become like the forgotten children. The way I photograph some of these very kind of hard-hitting issues, I'm trying to create empathy so that people can feel what it's like to say, like in Guatemala, live with this kind of violence, or to have a child with a disability, or to have a family member that is struggling with drug addiction. So I think for me, the power of photography is empathy, and is to try and create understanding. 